So we are reading verse number 42 from Vilap Kusumanjali. Like yesterday, and we will continue. With even the slightest plink from the corners of her eyes, uh, from the corners of your eyes, you immediately tie down the king of elephants, Krishna, tightly. With even the slightest blink from the corners of your eyes, you immediately tie down the king of elephants, Krishna, tightly. When will this person worship those two eyes that defeat the fickleness of the wagtail bird with eyeliner? When will this person worship those two eyes that defeat the fickleness of wagtail bird with eyeliner? So this is the verse and yesterday we actually were reading in the explanation of Srila Anandadas Babaji till in the English version, version it's uh, page 168, the second verse from Pada Kalpa Taru. And after this second verse, we will go read on. But since that point, we had the following themes yesterday. We saw that the only support of Krishna is actually in the uh, in the glances of Radhika. So the only support of Krishna is in the glances of Radhika. That's his only support. We were talking about Upasana, which Anandadas Babaji was actually translating uh, in one place very nicely, in another verse, not this here, sitting close by Upa Asana. And in this relation with the eyes, we were meditating that someone is sitting directly and looking in the eyes of Radharani. So, the ocean of Lila Rasa in the eyes of Radharani. We were talking about Truva Anusmriti, that the meditation is like Truva on one point, but, but, in the position of the smallest, the half syllable. And then Smriti, the meditation, will come. And we can slide down into Samadhi by this. Then we were talking about, she is always victorious. That's why the name of Radharani is Jai Shri. She is victorious in gambling, joking, water games, love games, and so on. That's why she is the only support to Krishna. We heard about the binding success of Rata in comparison to Yashoda's binding. How she binds him immediately with her Madan Ras playful glances. 
Then we heard about Pushpa Banaya and the few of the Mandaris in that Gayatri Mandra. And that actually he is falling unconscious. He is losing his crown and his yellow duty. And that this is the good luck and the happiness for the Mandaris. So this is what we heard yesterday, just shortly as an overview. And now I will just go on reading and please Goranga Sundara, Tarun Baba, all, all, all souls who are here who can share their feelings on this, please do it. Jainanda Maharaj or Gurudev maybe, if he's here, I don't know. So I hope you just share. I will just read from this point we stopped yesterday. So it's the a verse of uh, Patakalpataru Ankitara Duti Virale Boshiya Rijana Koreche Vidhi Nila Patma Bhavi Lubhata Brahmara Chti Cheche Nirabhadhi. The Creator sat down in solitude to create the pupils of her two eyes. Of course, this is about Radharani. Thinking them to be blue lotus flowers, the greedy bumblebees, or Krishna, constantly run for them. The Creator sat down in solitude to create the pupils of her two eyes, thinking them to be blue lotus flowers. The greedy bumblebees, or Krishna, constantly run for them. The beauty of Sri Radhika's eyes subdue Shri Krishna, the freely enjoying mad young elephant of Braj, who is otherwise uncontrollable. Krishna is named Hari because he steals everyone's hearts and minds with his extraordinary beauty and sweetness. And he is named Krishna because he is all attractive and all blissful. He can only be controlled by pure selfless love. And there are different amounts of love different devotees have for him. The amounts are classified in four levels, Anu, Atomic, Apekshika, Unadika Maya, more or less, Mahan, Great, and Paramamahan, the greatest love. Ordinary devotees have an atomic amount of Brahma. Narada Muni and other sages have more or less Brahma. The Brajavasis have great love and only Ratarani has the greatest love. Krishna is controlled by his devotees according to the amount of love they have for him. And Sri Radhika has the greatest love for him. Therefore, she controls him 
to the utmost. Madan Mohan, the enchanter of Cupid, is bound tightly by even Swamini's slightest glance, like the king of elephants. So maybe someone wants to share on this part something. So, we just heard that Krishna is only controlled by love. And we heard that the amount of love someone has for him is actually the base how much this person can control him. Like Goranga Sundara yesterday gave this example of Yashodama trying to bind him. <clears throat> she had to make great endeavor to, in the end, bind him. But as we hear here, Sri Radhika is binding him with even the slightest movement of her eyes. And we heard that actually the hold of Krishna are these glances. So we can imagine he's completely fixed on Radharani's eyes. Otherwise, how he can see the slightest movement of her eyes? He's holding himself. He's always completely fixed looking in her eyes because this as we know is the window to the person or to the inner world of the person so also krishna can see madan mahabhav through the eyes of radharani and that's his hold and as soon as these eyes are moving, his hold is shaking. And he has, he has to react. It's not possible in another way. If you hold something and this is moving, you also move. That's why even the slightest movement of Radharani's eyes are actually moving him. Yes, Tarun Baba, please. <laughs> um, I uh, beg for forgiveness for repeating myself, but this is what you just said on what Baba is saying, <clears throat> that starting from Anu in the love, the Jiva or the devotee has for Krishna and for Radha, it is going on and on and on, so Anu and then higher and higher and the highest love, Madanakya Mahabhav has Srimati Radharani. So I can only say again and to remind everyone <clears throat> that this is, we are so fortunate to sit here and to discuss this because you see Nanda Baba and, and, and what you said, um, no, not Nanda Baba, na, na, uh, the one Narada Muni, Narada Muni, Narada Muni, and Buddha and all the great sages, they they don't know anything about Manjari Bhav. They have no insights. They may know about it, maybe, but they have no insights in Manjari Bhav. So they we are here sitting and listening to so much intimate details revealed by <clears throat> my beloved Gurudev and by Sadhu Maharaj. This is actually such a fortunate thing because, like we, like you said, 
the, the love the devotee feels for the divine couple is going higher and higher and higher. So as Manjari Bhav, Sadakas, which practitioners of Manjari Bhav, we have actually a very, very unique opportunity to, to cling to this highest love because Radhika and the Manjaris are so close. And this is our daily prayer. Oh, Swamini, oh, ocean of compassion, please be merciful to me so that we are connected to her vibration, that we are connected to her love. This is actually unbelievably merciful by Mahaprabhu given to us. This is what we have to remember every day. Yesterday, or, the, or the, these days, we also said that we can be so lucky that that we we, sh we have this opportunity not to not to stay at the anu level and the next level and maybe in the middle somewhere middle school you know no we are in the topmost university class and even in the university not many people know that this class is happening <laughs> so this is very 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 beneficial for the jiva that we can actually take the the lotus feet of our Gurudev, put it into our hearts, and then receive this unbelievable mercy that we can actually talk about Manjari Bhav, that we know what is the seva we have to do, that we know our spiritual form. Just imagine Narada Muni, he saw, he, he saw Radharani very quickly, and then she went away and you, you, you can see in, in, in Radharasa Sudhanidhi, there is this verse, not even the great sages know about Swamini no, or know about the glories of Radhika or the, 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 the smell, how she smells and all these things. And I was just reading this morning in Radharasa Sudhanidhi that the mantra is walking behind Radhika with the paraphernalia when she is going to the Nikuncha to meet Krishna. I mean... Wow, you see, this is this is what 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 was never revealed before, and we are sitting here, and we are discussing this. So we are actually bathing in a stream of nectar, and this is so beneficial for everyone to hear. And we always have to remember this: that this is this Madanakya Mahabhav, this this love Swamini has in her heart. She is sharing with us. A fool like me sitting here in Germany, we still can say, please, ocean of compassion, be merciful unto me. So we can have this connection via our Guru Dev, Guru Manjari, to such a sweet ocean of compassion and that we can uh, take part even and be a very, very strong Manjari in this matter. And we can identify strongly with our different self let's say like that you know so this is in this world very very helpful thank you for your great appreciation actually for this and please again and again remind us Baba inspired me to say something because he used one very nice word, paraphernalia, which Manjaris are always bringing, running after Swamini uh, and behind Swamini, sorry. And we can see that there is a difference paraphernalia for the puja. And this, in the words, we can hear and see also and feel different kinds of paraphernalia are mentioning. So Radhika wants to worship, to offer puja like Prema Pujarini, Mahabhava Pujarini. She wants to worship Mohan with her beautiful blue eyes. This is paraphernalia of Radhika, because like Goravani said, through her eyes, all emotions can be visible. 
and she is giving the pleasure to her beloved with this nice, sweet puja, with paraphernalia of her eyes. But also, manjaris are doing prema puja. Prema, they are prema pujarinis because they want to give the pleasure to Radhika. How? By making the seva of kajal seva. So this kajal is also paraphernalia, which manjaris are very, very nicely and tenderly, fully emotionally, are putting around Radhika's eyes. And this kajal actually is a black color. So when they are putting this kajal around the eyes, they are worshipping the Radhika. And the best worship of Radhika is to remember on Krishna. And this black kajal is automatically remembering Radhika on Krishna. But also this kajal has the smell, specific smell. And this smell also is the smell of Krishna's love. And Manjaris here, Tulasi Manjari, is putting this beautiful, undescribable paraphernalia around Radhika's eyes and remembering about different lilas. But not, it's not the question only of remembering Radhika, but increasing her feelings with this black flavor around her eyes. So this is very nice paraphernalia for worshipping and according to, to the mood, to the time. And uh, we, sadakas, like Tarunji said, really we have unbelievable opportunity to listen about this and what to say to speak about this and what to say even more to little, five seconds, five minutes, think about this. Who is talking about Radhika? Who is worshipping now Radhika with his ears, tongues, eyes, minds, heart, now in this moment in all this planet of eight million, billions of billion. Billion. Yeah. <laughs> Who is doing this? So I'm very thankful to, to Tarn because he's always, always remember us. And I'm also remember devotees in Croatia. Be aware what which kind of gift we got. Who is doing also, this? Maybe, maybe few Rajavasis we don't know. Yes, Baba. Also, also, what is important in that matter, like you said nicely, that the seva, everyone, this is such mind-blowing stuff for us, mundane, controlled, living entities. We are here, like I last time or last time before I said, we are living here in a chronological timeline. We are living from A to B to C to D. And we only, I, I can only now call Goravani and I will speak to him. So Gora, Gora, Goranga Sundra cannot call Goranga, Goravani at the same time I'm calling Goravani. So, but in the spiritual world, it is mind blowing. Baba once said that it is like everyone has his own Ishtadevi, his own Radhika, his own place, his own Seva. It is impossible for our mind to think that millions of Manjaris are performing seva to swamini but this is just because we are limited it is not like i said one time ago a long time ago it's not it's not imaginable to do this but it's a fact that every liberated soul every liberated when we when we realize our mantra form and when we have this opportunity to enter at one point the divine lila the nikuncha lilas it is not that there's only one Radha and Krishna sitting and millions and millions I have have an elephant's card and have to, oh, I am number 450,315 and I have to wait and wait and wait until I can press the lotus feet of Swamini or bring her some water or 
you know. So this is this is not to be imagined. We have just have the nishta in our ishta devi. We have to have the nishta in our guru manjari, and we have to have nishta in our seva. And we can imagine this. This is this is not sahaja. This is not wrong. You sit down. And you imagine what is your seva. I have a specific seva. My wife has a specific seva. You have a specific seva. Do this in the mind. And sometimes you can also do it to your deities, depending on what kind of seva this is. We, are, we have one specific seva, but we are ready to do all sevas. So I know the seva, the specific seva of my Guru Mantra, and I have one specific seva. So this we can do even here with this material body. But this, we have to have this nishta that this is not going in vain or oh, this is just a daily ritual. No, it is actually like that. That at one time, we have to have this faith and this nishta. I have to remind myself every day that this is real, that we have to have the opportunity to become this person and to have this dual identity that we can sit down, some, some are bringing you know, like you said, paraphernalia, some are bringing scented water, some are bringing the, the, the kayal, some are uh, a specific seva is pressing the lotus feet of Swamini, some are fanning her. So it is not that we, that we have to think, oh yeah, nice, you know, I can imagine this. No, this is really an activity that we can perform, Rupa Goswami has said, in the mind, mentally conceived. So this is very important that we, we know that we have this seva and we don't stand in line and wait with millions of others. We have to have this big nishta that the spiritual world is something completely different like this place here. Like, like I said, I can only call one person and nobody can call this person at the same time. But Radhika and Krishna, they have unlimited unlimited it is unlimited you can we cannot imagine you Kishore, my god brother once said you have your own spiritual planet you can you can nearly say this is of course it's exaggerated but it is really like that that you have as a mantra when you have attained swarup city you have a very close relationship with your guru manjari and with radha and krishna and how this is working our minds he cannot know, but we can have the faith and therefore this nishta in the lotus feet of Gurudev to achieve our goal. Lotus feet of Gurudev are not the goal, but this seva in the Nikunshas, this is the goal. And by the nishta in the lotus feet of Gurudev, at one point, we have to have this faith that we can do that and we can be there. This is the only hope we have in this material. Just look around. Just look around and, and see what is like, like uh, Goranga Sundara said, what are the people doing? You know, we are sitting here and we try our best to remember Radha and Krishna in the way our Gurudev wants us to do that. And this is the best way for us. Manjari Bhav Sadaka's reading Vilabakusu Manjali and Radha Rasa Sudhanidi is the only way Gurudev many times said to, to achieve this goal. And we, we all have to, even if you don't, receive Sita Pranali, just think that you have it. Just think as uh, that you that you got it. That, uh, and what you wish will come into existence. Gurudev will give you this revelation. And even, even if you don't have it yet, just think about it. Fake it until you make it, they say, in the material world. Do it. Sit down and just try to imagine. For me, it is not easy to think as a 12-year-old girl. I have a body, you know, <laughs> but but we can we can do this. This is what 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 our Buddha have told us, and this is very very beneficial to do. In all these activities, we can do this. We can try every day. May I add something? Please. Yes. Harold, thank you very much. I appreciate it so very very much that you. Uh, if the connection between material and transcendental world where immanence and transcendence are meeting and dancing, I would say, they are dancing. And um, we are meant as jivas, we are, we have the tatasta shakti is a shakti, it is pure energy. And the demigodis are jealous because of this shakti the human being has. 
we are standing with the feet on Mother Earth, folding our hands, our head to the sky in between. Tatasta Shakti. And, and it's, it's so beautiful that you always point out that, that we have got such a precious, precious game to be together reading this. And so I can, and with this consciousness, I'm able to get this, yes, in every, um, so we are here, we, perhaps we are not in a false ego, but in an ego which has to transcendent what we are preceding to percept in german there's a the much better word it is wahrnehmung perception per perception. perception in german it is wahrnehmung that means we take the truth of that we we receive with our senses there has to be buddhi uh, consciousness that this is only a hint to transcendence And in Vilap Kusmandali, we are allowed to do personal service. Really, just our small soul. <laughs> so um, confidential. Yes. Perhaps, that, may I some, t say something more? I, this verse, the creator sat down in solitude to create The pupils of Radha's two eyes. Who is the creator? And he sat down in solitude, being calm, being very conscious. And then with great love, he created the pupils, the black point in her eyes. Isn't it Krishna? In her eyes, just amidst her. Yes. This is so wonderful. You, so, you should speak much more often. This is my humble opinion. Now you, you said two, two super nice things, which immediately my mind picked up, if I may, Koravani, if I'm not stealing the time, you know. This is a sharing, and whoever is inspired should share. This is actually the principle. So, of so Sudevi, she said two things. This Tatashta, like she said, it's very, very, yeah, it's a very special energy. You said the demigods, they are very envious, and that's true. So we have, as Tatashta Shakti, we have this possibility. We are in the middle. Gurudev is always saying we are playing ping pong. We have to play a little big ping pong every day, but we, we don't play it with attachment. So the Tatashta Shakti has this unique opportunity to combine. Like if you put some iron into fire, the iron will get the quality of fire. So if you, as a Tatashta Shakti, get into contact with Bhakti, Ladini and Sambit Shakti of the Supreme Lord, you get the same quality as he, his Varupa Shakti. So this is only possible for the Jiva, that we can achieve this. We can attain this, that we have, we can be this body, this spiritual body, by the mercy of Bhakti Devi. So Tatashta Shakti has this possibility to completely, like iron gets the, gets the nature of fire. So Tatashta Shakti can get this nature of, of Svarupa Shakti. And then we are identifying ourselves no as mind, body, and soul, but as our spiritual body. And the very interesting thing you also said, Sudevi, was this buddhi. So Sadhu Maharaj always said, and, and, and buddhi means, usually it means intelligence or identification of intelligence. So Jiva Goswami said, and, and my guru, in, in one Shastra he quotes it, actually what is the, the, the buddhi? What is the buddhi stotram for the, for the Manjari Bhav Sadakas? What is this buddhi? What is this intelligence? So there's only one buddhi. Buddhi means intelligence. What is that for us? It means I am 
an eternal mantra. I am this mantra. I can be this citadel. This means this is our ahankara. This is our buddhi. This is our intelligence. To differentiate, how can I attain Svarupa city? This is our buddhi. For the, for the Sankhya philosopher, the buddhi is to differentiate between all these material elements. For the Maya Shakti persuader, they want to be one with Brahman. So they use their buddhi for merging into impersonal Brahman. But as us, we are bhaktas and we are not only Anu Bhakta or next Bhakta, we are Bhaktas <clears throat> under the guidance of Rupa Goswami and we want to be Mancharis. So our buddhi should always be directed towards this. How can we become this Siddhadeya? How can we attain this Varupa Siddhi? This is our buddhi that was just coming to me that we can do this every day. And, and what is the main thing in this? The main thing of that buddhi is love. If we don't act in love, all buddhi, all intelligence is for nish. It, it, it is for nil. It is going out. So I realize this now in so many, many years. If I don't act with the proper understanding of love, and therefore I'm so thankful to, to Sadhu Maharaj, our beloved Gurudev, that this is actually love in action. This is actually what brings us to attain Svarupa Siddhi, because the mandaris are nothing else but personifications of humility and love. So this, like I said last time, we have to practice this every day. This is for me also the most important challenge of my life to act, like you said, like nectar of devotion, act in devotion, this, this acting, you know, not criticizing anyone, not judging anyone, not being in the false ego, like you said. So this. This is very important every day to do everything in this consciousness. And this is the actual buddhi, the intelligence of the Manjari Bhav Sadaka, that we see always this connected to our goal, to identify with our spiritual body. So I'm thankful you, you brought this out today. These are very, very important points. Every morning you say this buddhi, I am Radhika's maidservant. I am. Punkt. <laughs> No, this is that's it. So this is very important. We don't need buddhi like you know, like Shankya philosophy or all these different things. We are Rupa Nuka and we want this only. This I want to be a king. This is buddhi enough. This is the highest buddhi. <laughs> Gurudev used to say, godly intelligence. Because we are godly. If we see it out of any rasa, then we are the children of Krishna and our beloved mother Radha. And if we accept this in the heart, then we can go into rasa if this is installed, then we know that we are godly, isn't it? <coughs> we accept it, yes. This is godly intelligence. And the main point, what's the use of knowing verses, of knowing Vedas, of knowing so many things, so many things you can know, but you will never know everything. So what's the use? But if you love, you can have the highest love. And this is actually the, the great gift, because if you are going to Radha, you can get the highest love immediately. You don't have to work yourself up, actually. If you want to have knowledge, you have to work, work again and again. You have to use your brain and drain your brain. And it's, boah. It's useless in the end. But if you use your godly intelligence and go, like Krishna is saying, 1866 in Bhagavad Gita, like we know, Mam Ekam Sharanam means, go to my beloved, take shelter. 
So if we do this, if we use this godly intelligence and freedom, then we are connected not just to love. No, we are connected to the greatest possible, completely mad love, Radharani. And we can dive in directly in the highest fear of love, actually. The highest sphere. So this is, this is very true. And Baba, Baba did one thing. He said in one purport, he said, the palace of Rasa is built on the foundation of Tattva. So what, did, what does that mean? You know, that doesn't mean, like you said, Bharavani, that we study millions of literatures and millions of sh uh, Shastras. But there is this but. We have to have a proper understanding, at least a proper understanding of the Tattva. Tattva Siddhanta is not that we say, yeah, okay, I'm Radhika's maidservant, I don't care about Tattva. So, the, but what is the most important point is, like I said, this buddhi, this intelligence. We, know, we should know about the Tattva. Gurudev, my Baba, I have one book here, he, a, a collected <clears throat> essays on Bhakta Tattva, Bhakti Tattva, Rasa Tattva, Radha Tattva, Krishna Tattva, all these Tattvas. Tattva means actually Samal Suryum. Tattva means uh, knowledge base, you know, all these things need to be known, but there's this big but, only for one thing. We should always connect everything to the lotus feet of Swamini and to our seva and to our spiritual form. Like you said, Goraman, it is very useless to read all the Sandarbhas without knowing who you are. What is the use? I have them all upstairs, all Bhakti Sandarbhas, fantastic books, but without identifying who we are. There is no use of that. So all this tattva, guru tattva, is very important. That bhakti tattva is also very important, but always under the guidance, anugatya of our beloved Gurudev. And when Gurudev is saying enough, you have now enough tattva intus in, in yourself, stop it. But to come to this point, we have to use the intelligence, this buddhi, to discriminate what is useful, like, like the book Raghavatma Chandrika, maybe some of you know this wonderful book by Vishwana Chakravati Thakur. Raghavatma Chandrika, Vishwana Chakravati Thakur is saying that some things are necessary and some things are not necessary. So we have to have this understanding of the right thing, tattva, but only in connection to our goal. Otherwise, it will be we have only the understanding of things, and we will lose our goal. Goranga Sundar many times said this. We are fixed in our goal, in our stai bath, and then we can uh, assimilate and, and, and digest, fadawan, all these tattvas to strengthen our nista in ishta, in guru, and in seva. So these three things are always in the foremost of everything. Otherwise, we will lose ourselves. And then it will only be jnana, 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 and we will lose ourselves. But if we have this understanding that what is the highest goal, then we can use it properly. So... Again, we read the end of this uh, part here. Madan Mohan, the enchanter of Cupid, is bound tightly by even Swamini's slightest glance, like the king of elephants. So although he is Madan Mohan, the enchanter of even Cupid, he will be enchanted by Cupid if he is without Radha. And Radha herself is binding him tightly. Tightly means no movement. Tight, completely tight. No chance. 
She is binding him with just a little cleanse. So we understand. Gorawani, one thing I, I, I just remember <laughs> Sudevi. When, when Sudevi was saying this very wonderful line in the beginning, we read today. Krishna sat down in solitude to create the pupil of Swamini. So, we all know, now comes the tattva, you see, mixed with rasa. I make now this example. Now, this sentence makes, not, makes only one sense, but it actually, it seems it doesn't make any sense, because if you understand, Radha and Krishna are both eternal. So, how can the creator then create the pupil of Swamini? You understand? So this is actually like black milk, you know, this is, it's not possible because both are eternal. So, but what is the point? Why is Baba saying this? This is very important. And I, I, I feel connected to, to Baba. So something popped up in, in my stupid head. Why is this, why is this line is there? Baba is not, it's impossible. Both are eternal, chicken and the egg thing, you know. Yeah, it's can, it cannot be. Krishna didn't create the jivas and for, it, it never created Radhika. But this sentence, as a manchari bhav sadaka, which we all are under the guidance of Rupa Goswami, Raghunadas Goswami, and Gurudev. Now we understand this line in the following. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So this line, what is this line doing and saying to us? This line is only saying one thing. Radhika is the personification of the biggest happiness inside of Krishna. So just imagine you are, imagine you are your best happiness you have ever experienced in your life. And then this most blissful happiness you experience in your life transforms into a person. Of course, we are now bound in time and space. But actually, this sentence that Rad Krishna sit down in solitude. To create the pupil, the littlest thing of Radhika. So this means this sentence is only saying that Krishna loves Swamini so much, and that this is, shows also the position of how much Radhika is above Krishna, how much Krishna worships Swamini, and how fortunate we are. This is at least how I understand this sentence. Maybe I'm wrong. But this is how we can see the glories of Radhika, although she is eternal. So this sometimes Shastra is saying these sentences to, to, to make a point how glorious Swamini is, that even Krishna needs to sit down in solitude. He cannot do this in, in stressful environment. And he creates this pupil of Swamini in solitude. That means Swamini is so wonderful and so beautiful that he has to sit down and do this. So that shows us how fortunate we are as Manjari Bhav Sadakas. So because we are just you now in meditations, because we cannot say that this is now pure tattva, it's meditation, it's an understanding of the heart. So I would say Krishna cannot create this wonderful pupils alone. Why? He doesn't understand his own needs and own wishes in the heart. Who is the person who understands what he wishes? What are his needs? Only one person knows. Radharani herself. So we may say that actually she has to create these pupils because otherwise how could they satisfy Krishna so much? It's not possible if he create. But we can see that if we say Krishna, we mean usually the whole and we know two persons and one soul. So we may understand in this sentence also. But actually, from my feelings, I would say Krishna is not able to 
actually create such a beauty, which is actually uh, giving him such a pleasure and is tying him down, actually. Yes, it's so nice. Subject. Arunji <laughs> put it. Yeah. Mixing tattva and rasa, it's very <laughs> obvious here. But somehow <clears throat> it came to me that this is confession of Krishna. That he's always losing. His confession of Krishna that he is completely depend on these two blue eyes and that he, like a bumblebee, is always running around, around, flying around, flying around, kissing these lotus flowers. This is Paraki above words of Krishna. And he is confessing that what can I do? I am creator, but I am like a bumblebee who is always flying around these beautiful blue lotus flowers, which are full of love for me. And these blue eyes, blue flowers, lotus flowers are completely controlling me. So this kind of angle of rasa is... Just now, it came to me, it's, Krishna is speaking honestly, openly, in confession mood, that he is completely under control of Radhika. And he is bumble, just a Brahmar, bumblebee, who is always trying to kiss to touch these lotus flowers. No, thank you, Radhe Radhe. So even by the slightest glance, he is bound down like the king of elephants. When Krishna returns to his village in the afternoon, this lila is called Uttaragosht, Swamini stands on her moon tower to discreetly admire his beauty from a distance. You know, moon tower, you can go up, it's a small high tower, and you could watch the moon. And we understand what the moon is for Radharani. So discreetly, she is admiring the beauty from a distance. Burning in the fire of separation from Krishna. And considering each second that she is separated from him to last like a millennium. Her girlfriends show her Sundari Pasya Milati Vanamali. Oh, beautiful girl, look! Vanamali. Krishna, who wears a garland of forest flowers, he has come. Our hero does not look up to Swamini. Her heart filled with tremendous anguish of love and separation stares fully at him. Drinking the boundless nectar of his form with the cups of her eyes. How many hundreds of emotions she reveals. The forest fire of separation 
that burned in her heart was extinguished simply by seeing Shyamsundara. This time, Shyamsundara looks back at her, and both the lovers become shy. Sri Radhika pulls her veil straight and goes away. Then she stops and turns around again, thinking, Before I go, I have to see him once more, and casts a slight glance at him. It is a restless, momentary glance, because she is very shy. She slightly smiles in a nervous way, because she is so happy to see him. Her beautiful glance is anointed with bashfulness and humility. Shyama thirsts for the glance of Swamini. Swamini thinks to herself, I could not give anything to you during our midday pastimes. That's why her sidelong glances, uh, her sidelong glance is filled with humility. And she is very glad because she thinks, at least one time I could see him. How many things is she telling him through her glances? Her glance is the great medicine that saves the life of Shyam, who also suffers of separation from her. This is the treasure of his meditation. Shyama keeps the sweetness of that glance carved on the slab of his heart. Without receiving this formal worship of her Shyam, uh, of her, Shyam could not survive. How many things she told me through this momentary glance. Shyama meditates. During Purvarag, these glances madden him and keep him awake all night. Just to remind Purvarag is the beginning stage of love. During Purvarag, these glances madden him and keep him awake all night. Although Krishna controls everything and everyone, these momentary glances control even him. Although innumerable gopis are eager for his sweet glance, Krishna eagerly covets Radhika's slightest beautiful glance. The slightest gesture of these eyes bewilder Krishna, the king of elephants. The sweetness of these eyes makes him helpless To Lassi serves Swamini and makes her relish the flavors of the remembrance of these pastimes as well, saying, Hey, Swamini, can this maidservant not worship your eyes that control the Krishna elephant 
with even the slightest movement? Is such a goddess not offered puja? The Mahachans say, but this exchange of glances is even more relishable than the intimate pastimes. That's why there is so much worship of Sri Radha's emotional, loving glances. You hear me? You don't hear me? Yeah, now. Okay. Okay, sorry. So maybe we can stop Goravani here. It's a long paragraph. And with uh, two, three parts, actually. So we can see here this beautiful lila. And also how Mohan is very eager to look Radhika's emotional condition when she is standing and waiting on him on this moon tower. So Baba is saying here that different emotions like uh, bashfulness, shy, humility, eagerness, passion, nervousness, is appears on Radhika's form, appearance. And it's very visible on her face, especially through her eyes. And these kind of emotions are beautiful ornaments on the body of Srimata Radharani. And Krishna wants to witness these emotional ornaments which are coming in the waves of Srimati Radharani. And in that moment, her golden color of Mahabhava is always changing. Her gestures on the face are also constantly, every second, are changing, expressing so much love and different emotions to Krishna. So he wants to relish this because he knows he is doing, she is doing it for my pleasure. So this is the exchange of love of Yugala Kishore in one very delicate situation. Because she is at home and she is with her sakis and manjaris waiting for her lover to come with the cows and others. Cowboys. And Baba is saying that although it was uh, just a midday pastime, so it means two, three hours before they already have been together. Can you imagine just two, three hours before uh, they have been together and they exchange their love in very intimate and intense way. But just after two or three hours of separation, Radhika is feeling that she is dying. So this um, strong emotion, no one can control actually. These strong emotions of Bhava is decoration on all Radhika's body, and Krishna wants to dive in that. So, when we meditate on this part of Lila, there's so many subtle mm. meanings, so many subtle emotional exchanges, which, by the mercy of Anantadas Babaji, and our Gurudev, who opened, they opened our eyes, when I say open their eyes, I don't have eyes. I hope that they will 
open my heart, actually. We, we can go a little bit deeper and deeper in this meditation. So in that way, our Buddha yoga, <laughs> spiritual attachment, will increase because our bhajatam priti, our bhajana worship with love will increase. And it will help us to focus our intelligence on one point to become rather the sick. And we can see how many talkings is present, silent speech in this moment when Radhika and Krishna is changing the glances. This is the silent speech and also silent puja. Radhika with, without voice, just with glances, she is worshipping her beloved. So, we can see that there is one very nice expression Baba is mentioning somewhere in Vilapa, I don't know where, Kama Yantra. Kama Yantra. Each part of Radhika's decoration or part of the body is like a Kama Yantra for Krishna. What does it mean, Kama Yantra? It's instrument. Yantra, instrument, which brings him under her control. He is Kama there. But, he, or like Goravani Kupit read, Madan Mohan. But now we can see that when Radhika has a kajal around her eyes, this is Kama Yantra, instrument, which make him completely crazy, completely mad. Goranga Sundara, also this, this is such a, this, this, this is one of actually my, one of my favorite moments. There are many, many, many favorite moments, but we always say that we should think ourselves as being in the Leela. And this Moon Tower Leela is one of the best possibilities to, to imagine yourself being there because it is so important. Why is it so important that the Manjaris are there? Because only the manjaris understand what is going on in that moment. Because around Radhika, there may be Lalita and Vishaka and all the Sakis, but they don't know what, what is going on in the turmoil of Swamini's heart. So this, this Leela, this Moon Tower Leela, when she's standing up there, many Shastras present that Leela, many, many Acharyas. And this Leela is so powerful because, like you said so wonderfully, so many emotions are coming up. There is this telepathic, telepathic communication between Radha and Krishna, but only the, the Radhika, in one, I think in one explanation, only because the Manjaris are there, Radhika has the power to go up to the moon tower. Normally, she, she is so weak out of separation that she is not being able to come up to this tower. She only can go up because of the mantras. And this is again coming to the point, this is our fortune that we can meditate upon this, that we can see this Leela and understand this Leela. And why my, my first impulse was, why is it so difficult for Krishna to look at Radhika? Because many, many are there and he cannot do this openly and directly. So this is a very, very confidential and hidden thing. And only Tulsi Manchari and, and Rupa Manchari and Guru Manchari and us maybe one day, we can understand what is really going on in the heart of Radhika when, like you said, they met each other two, three hours before at Radhakund. But now again, it's like for the first time. So Lalita and Vishaka, they may think, is she going, what is, what is going on with her? But only the Manchuris, they understand this. They have been there. They have been at Radhakund. They have been in the, in the Nikunjas. The Sakis don't know this. And this is why Manjari Bhav is so sublime. Unnatochvala Rasa Svabhakti Shriyam. This is actually why we want to imbibe 
this beautiful path because standing up there, this must be incredible to see this, you know, when the, when the clouds of smoke and the clouds of dust are coming and Radhika is immediately thinking, now Krishna is coming. This is such a fantastic, fantastic scene. I remember Bhakti, you know, some, I think Bhakti, you know, Thakur said, or, or Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, they, they had a similar feeling. They want to be, what, what did they say? Um, I think they want to be at, at Kurukshetra when Radhika is meeting Krishna at Kurukshetra at the battlefield because Radhika then needs the most assistance. So these feelings and these emotions they are so powerful. And only because the mantras understand they are there, she, Radhika can actually do this. And she has the courage. Like you said, she goes away and then turns back again. This is also because the mantras are a little bit pushing her to do it like that. So this is... So many, many, many wonderful things in this in this pastime. This, for me, this is one of the one of the best to to to, to sit down and imagine this. It's 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 so romantic. I I, I my it's, it's, there's everything is there. You know the, the difficulties, the hidden t communication by telepathy. This is one of this, and this is going on the whole day. This is just one, and it's so beautiful. May, may I try? <clears throat> um, on this moon tower, they, Radhika is in exposed, exposed position. Everybody can see her. And at the same moment, they are, she, she wants to hide herself. Also Krishna wants to hide. He isn't able to look up to her. And it burns in his heart. And perhaps... Krishna would like to protect Sri Radhika because if he would look in her eyes, she, she could collapse. She couldn't tolerate this. So now she, she is allowed to, to drink with the cup, cups of her eyes, his forms. They can relish is in its, its very beauty. And and she's so shy in this moment. She's so greedy and so shy. <laughs> yes. Sorry. When you say the beauty, what is the beauty for Radharani of him? What is the beauty from Krishna for the Mandaris? The beauty is that he is actually covering that he is missing Radharani so much. It's covered because he's now with the cows, he's now coming back, he is now with others. But under the surface, actually, he is missing her so much. And she feels this inside when she looks at him. She can feel that, yes, he is missing me so much. So Radha wants to serve him like always and offering him her few. She's completely concentrated. Take it. You are missing me. Take my glance. I give you hold. Take my glance. I give you hold. Then he's taking. Now he gets back strength. Now she wants to leave. But Krishna is losing hold now. So she has to stop again, turning around, give him another hold. She is the best servant of love for him. So whatever she is doing is for him. And besides that, her wonderful love is emanating in every moment. And this is bewildering him. So this is just some entrance of a wonderful meditation, like Tarun Baba said, yes. It's such a wonderful scene, we can go very deep inside. Because always the lover feels what the beloved feels, and vice versa. And this is actually bringing up the feelings on each side more. 
more up, more high. It's growing. And the mandarins, they actually have nothing else to do than to, to put more in this fire. Bring it more up. Yes, the fire has to burn more and more. So it's a wonderful meditation, like Tarun Baba said. It's easy entrance and very, very deep, actually. Krishna is also in difficult situation when he is approaching to Moon Tower. <laughs> Because so many coward boys are around him. And some of them, they know his heart. And they just excuse themselves and they say, okay, I have to go in underground. I have to go very fast. My dear Baya, you are too slow. So, Krishna is, feels shy also because other cowboys are around him. But some of them, they know his heart and they are giving him a place that he can stop, tremble in front of Moon Tower while Radhika is shooting the arrows of her glances. He is not, in the beginning he was running, but when he was approaching to the tower, moon tower, his gate was not so secure and not so strong. And sometimes he stops, then try to continue a few steps, then shaking left and right. So this is the condition of Dira Lalita, Krishna, who is allowing himself to be like this, to be controlled by Shimateradharani's glances. And uh, there is one sentence, I really, I'm sorry, I don't want to jump over this. Uh, so many are <laughs> of them. But uh, Mohan or Sham keeps the sweetness of that glance carved on the slab of his heart. Mohan keeps the sweetness of that glance carved on the slab, on the surface of his heart. He wants that Radhika's emotions be strongly carved in his heart. He also wants samskaras. He also wants deep impressions to be carved in his heart so that when he is again alone, without her, that he can intensive, intensely remember her. So what we are doing here, we are trying to carve these lilas, in our hearts. And these impressions has to be more deeper and deeper and deeper. And in one moment, they will start to fructify, to give the fruits. So Guranga Sundra, this is this is the whole purpose of Raghunath Goswami. Therefore, <laughs> therefore he wrote Vilapakusa Manjali. That was the whole purpose. First of all, to glorify Swamini and the Seva of the Mandris, but as because his notion of compassion, of mercy, he wrote this Vilapakusa Manjali so that we can carve all these 
into our hearts. All this crying, this is lamentations. They should, like you said, be carved into our hearts. This is beautiful. So Krishna is giving us also <laughs> example. He wants to carve these pastimes, these emotional ornaments of Radhika in his heart. So that's the reason why we are again so fortunate that we can listen, talk, think, read, exchange, share all these beautiful kata, because this kata will influence our heart and be carved in our hearts. And we need that desperately. So, Radhe Radhe, I just wanted to say like this. I have to say, I, I, I like very much this idea to, to share together on, on the base of this and, and, and don't call it, you know, German sharing or, you know, it actually, maybe we can go on, you know, and just continue like this because actually the verses, they have so much inside and, it's so wonderful to hear what are your feelings to this verse and to share this. It's so wonderful. I think it's very, it's a very big inspiration, actually. I don't know what you are thinking, but maybe we can go on in the future like this and follow one theme. Because then more is coming out, actually, more feelings. It's like joining the ocean of the different kind of uh, feelings of the devotees here. Anyway, maybe we can think about this. E bhava yukta de kira dhasyanayana Sanghama hoite sukkabhai kuti guna. When I look at Radha's eyes and face in this mood, I feel a million times more happiness than when I directly unite with her. This is a quote from Chaitanya Charitamrita. If someone wants to read Madhya Lila chapter 8, you can find the glorifications, how Krishna is actually glorifying Radharani without limits. It's a wonderful meditation also. Tulasi says, I cannot live without worshipping the goddess of your eyes. With what shall I formally worship these eyes of yours? With Kachal? It's not actually Kachal eyeliner, but Garal, poison, putting Krishna's heart on fire. This is not just puja, this is complete puja, some puja is yati. Not only your eyes will be worshipped, the prasadi flowers will also stick to Krishna's lips. When Krishna sees this kajal, he will kiss your eyes so that the kachal will stick on his lips. In this way, Krishna gets the leftover flower of my puja on his lips. And my formal worship is complete, some puja. Tulasi puts eyeliner around Kishori Mani's eyes that extend up to her ears. How wonderful is the beauty 
of this Kajal anointed eyes. Sri Vidyapati Chakra sings. Two lotus eyes painted with black anjana. They are blinking and playing hide and seek. The creator has tightly bound the startled Krishna Chakura to the robes of these black Kajal borders. Srila Vishwana Chakravati writes in Krishna Bhavanamrita 455. Seeing Sri Radhika's lotus like eyes with eyeliner, it seems as if the enemy of the sun, dense darkness, had thought. In this way, the power of the sun will fade and surrounded the friends of the sun, the lotus flowers, the eyes, as the eyeliner. But how amazing! Despite this, the luster of these lotus-like eyes simply continues forever. While Tulasi tells Swamini all this, she says to her anointed eyes, O oh, eyes, if you ask me, why are you smearing this black stuff around us? The best of Sri Radhika's senses. While you adorn all her other limbs with gold and pearls, Then I'll tell you, you don't want anything else but to see Krishna. And you are always eager for that. That's why I adorned you with this blackish kajal that has the same color as Krishna, Krishna Ruchi. Rade, Rade. Before we finished these last words of Haripada Shila, we can see from this little conversation, which is so mercifully, is revealed to us. This conversation of Tulsi and Radhika's eyes. It's like Tulsi is speaking, talking to the Radhika's eyes, and it's some joking manner. This is the why also Manjaris are belonging to this group, Narmasakis, Priya Narmasakis. They are making jokes with Radhika, but we can see here and here with her eyes, actually, but they are making jokes also with Radhika in a, such a tender, delicate, soft way. It's not jokes like uh, Sakis. When Sakis are making the jokes with Radhika, they are friends, equals, loud laughing, loud talking, but, and during that time, Manjaris are just looking, observing this scene, sometimes giggling very silently. 
and hiddenly. But we can see here that when they are in intimate situation together, and all these pastimes of putting Kanjala of Radharani is going on in the bathroom. So there is no one else around. And Manjar is making some nice talks, talking to the Radhika's eyes, little bit provoking them. And this conversation of eyes with eyes is also parakya. So the jokes of Manjaris with Radhika are parakya in a hidden way is going on in a very with so many codes. And how we know this? Because those Rasik devotees who are immersed in Manjari Bhava, they are mercifully open to us this secret so that we can, that these secrets can carve our hearts with full impressions. This is gift. This is rahasya. This is very secret thing. As we should appreciate and always be aware what we are reading and such a unique situation is that we are reading. We have to be also aware that all these beautiful Rasik devotees in Manjari Baba are opening the secret chambers of our of their hearts and they are splashing us with their emotions and their realizations. That's the most important thing. That we are splashed with bona fide realizations of someone who is who can really be who can really be a bona fide because he is in direct situation to witness and to serve this. It's so sweet when Raguna is talking with Radhika's eyes. Don't be angry on me. <laughs> Don't be envious on other ornaments and so on and so on and so on. So I just wanted, why I'm talking, because this part of, little, very, very little part of the lila is so deep, it's like an ocean, actually, of emotion. But it's showing the nature of Manjaris. The nature of Manjaris here is expressed through their specific way, way of joking and a little bit provoking. And it's such a sweet, lovely manner, is it? And it's different manner of making a jokes with Radhika like Sakis are doing. So it's intimate. Narma Saki. Riya Narma Saki. Radhika. And through his mercy, Srila Raghunath actually is giving us hints again and again how to do his seva, in which kind of consciousness actually, deep, very deep meditation, talking with each limb of Radhika's body. Why you get this and this ornament? what it will actually provoke. It will provoke that Krishna will come. 
when she's decorating the ears, she's saying, your ears just want to listen about Krishna. And is reminding Swamini in this way, sharing talks about Krishna, Leelas about Krishna. And here, the best, the best of all the parts of Radhika's body, or the best of Radhika's senses, actually. So it's very important here, the best of Radhika's senses. We can meditate on that. And like we yesterday said, if somebody is going in deep meditation about Radhika's eyes, staying close by Upasana, staying in this meditation and going deep into that meditation, then there's a hint. Why I smear this black stuff around? Because you only want to see Krishna. And Krishna always want to stick at your eyes, actually. That's the other side. Why this black stuff is smeared around your eyes? Because Krishna is fixed on your eyes. He will never, ever, ever leave your eyes. You are the hold of him. Your glance is the hold of him. So he will stick to your eyes and to your glances. So it's giving some idea in what way we can go actually deeper in this meditation. And this is just mercy. So we are in very good luck that we can share such topics, hear about this, help each other to go more deep, through Gurudev's mercy, he is guiding this. Like Krishna is not showing his love when he comes to the moon tower. Gurudev is also now a little bit more hidden. But his love comes out. You can feel it through his devotees. They are sharing and they are giving this deeper sight to look in and go deeper. So this is the mercy. And again, we are so happy to be together and share such things. So I will end this. Suddenly the vision disappears and Sri Raghunath Das laments. This is a song of Sri Haripachila. O oh Radhe, how wonderful are your glances. They attract everyone's eyes, friends and enemies alike. Even a momentary playful sidelong wink with these sweet eyes is making the king of elephants, Krishna, dizzy. He gets bound up and spins all around your lotus feet, desiring your blissful company. When can I ornament your restless eyes that defeat the fickleness of the vectile bird with this crushed eyeliner? Very much, Goravani. 
Tarunji. From this Haripada Shila last words, we can see how he is following Raghunath. Just straight, completely connected with his emotions. And he is receiving the same realizations because he is completely connected. He is not inventing his own way, just anugatya, following. And immediately realizations from the heart of Raghunath is penetrating, infusing in his heart. This is the follower. Radhe Radhe.